Some of you are very fortunate, but you're just not aware how fortunate you really are. Some of the very bad things that happen to you will turn out to be the same things that are working in your advantage. Let's say that you don't have a good bond with your family, with your relatives. That in itself, from a human point of view, is not a good thing, because human beings are social creatures. We crave community. So, to not have a good bond with your relatives, that's painful. And it can lead to anxiety disorders, it can lead to mental health issues. However, that same bad thing can work in your advantage. Just think about it. When you go through scripture, most of the men that were powerfully used by God were, were their families. Didn't Abram have to leave behind his family? And the one relative that came with him only brought him trouble? What about Isaac? What about Jacob? What about Moses? Moses' family had to give him up. Because there was infanticide going on, there was genocide going on on the Israelites. What about Samson? What about Jephthah? What about, well, David? Remember, when Samuel came to anoint the future king, he came to Jesse's house and he told Jesse, bring all your children. Jesse and his wife didn't even consider to bring David, even though David was one of the one of the children also. So when Jesse brought all his sons, except David, the prophet Samuel sensed that something was off. And he asked Jesse, do you have any other children? And Jesse brought David, and David was anointed. And when you read further, David's own siblings turned on him. Even before he defeated Goliath. And after he defeated Goliath, it became worse. So where was David's family? They turned on him. They were nowhere to be found. Look, this is something you see throughout scripture. What about Elijah? Elisha? What about Christ himself? Or before Christ, what about the prophet Jeremiah? The prophet Micah? Ezekiel? Where were their families? Christ's biological relatives, at least relatives of his human body, they turned on him. They turned on him, wanted to kill him. That's why Christ didn't return back to Nazareth. What about the apostles? Where were their families? You see how far this is going? It's a constant pattern in the world that when God anoints you, the world turns on you and your family i mean your relatives if they are not following christ they are the world and this is a pattern of the world when you are anointed they turn on you now you will have individual worldly people that will get along with you but those are, are exceptions the first people to turn on you are your own relatives they are your own kin they are the first to turn on you because in this world, people don't want you to be free. People become frightened when you are free. Let me give an example to you. It is a parable. It may sound a bit silly, but just think about it. If you have a tree out there, a very small tree, and someone picks up a gun and begins to shoot, shoot at a tree, the police comes and arrests the individual, and the police is very conflicted. The police think, hold on a minute, this is just a small tree. The tree is not in anyone's way. The tree doesn't threaten anyone, it's just a tree. The tree is only moving when there's some wind and there isn't even that much wind in that area. So the police is conflicted. Why is this individual shooting on this tree? Why is this individual so armed against this tree? Now, the police concluded this man had mental issues. This man had to be taken into a mental asylum. And the people there agreed with it. Because people were frightened that the man felt threatened by a tree. Now, if you have dogs on the loose, 
violent, angry dogs. I can understand that you want to carry a gun or a weapon against those dogs because street dogs, when they are violent, they can kill you. They can bite you to death. So, with violent street dogs, people would understand that you lose it and want to arm yourself against them. But when you have a tree, how can a tree threaten you? How can a tree bother you? It can't. Now, what am I pointing out with this? The world wants you to be like a, an insignificant tree. That they can do with that tree whatever they want, however they want, without having to face any consequences. That's what the world wants. The moment any human being moves into natural autonomy, which is freedom, they get under attack. Whether someone is born again or not born again. But when you're born again, you have no choice but to walk in freedom. So that's why they persecute you. That's why they afflict you. Afflict you. That's why they come after you. But even an unsafe worldly individual without Christ, if he or she moves a little bit towards freedom, they become the target of violence. People will begin to make life hard on them. People will begin to threaten them. So look, that bad thing, you not having a good bond with your family, it will work out in your advantage. Because now, think about it, you don't have to put up with their psychic violence close to you. Now you will face psychic attacks by them, because they're not in Christ, and they've turned on you, but the psychic violence will be at a distance. Now you won't have to put up with the danger they will generate. Now you don't have to put up with them trying to control you. Because when you look at many people out there, their relatives are controlling them. Their relatives are the ones guiding them, not the Holy Spirit. And behind those relatives, you have evil spirits. So it's evil spirits using their relatives to guide them and to direct them. It can be you grew up without a father. Let's say you're a man and you grew up without a father. For a woman, it's different, but for a man, men can cope with it better in general than women do. But nevertheless, it's still something that can be intense. But think about it. Look at the bigger picture. Your earthly biological dad. Was he following God? Was he interested in change? Was he interested in looking at the bigger picture? Was he interested in investing? For long-term solutions? If all your answers on these questions are no, then it can be that God tolerated your parents to be messed up so that your, your toxic father would not be around you. And because your toxic father was not around, God now filled this gap with his spirit. So God was the one raising you without you being aware of it. I'm not saying that what your parents did was good. They've messed up. That shouldn't have happened. But God tolerated it to happen. And you, not growing up with that biological dad, it's working in your advantage. Or it can be that some people rejected you. They don't want to hang out with you because you don't meet their expectations. And now, now that you operate in financial and material prosperity, they are not around to drain you. So now, they don't even dare to pretend or to fake being friends with you because they're too ashamed, they're too embarrassed by how they've treated you. So anytime they see you, this is triggered. What happens? Them rejecting you was them hanging themselves. They trapped themselves. And by them trapping themselves, it's now working your advantage that you will never have to put up with them anymore. Think about it. The bad that happened works in your advantage. I don't think that that is a good thing that the bad happened. No, the bad should have never happened. But the bad that happened will work out in your advantage. Many of you who are listening to this, you are very fortunate. But it's you who just can't see how fortunate you are. So I'm praying that... The Heavenly Father will reveal unto you how fortunate you are. Me? I'm not going to talk too much about me. 
but I had some bad stuff happening to me too. Yes, am I denying it? No. Am I into a victim mode, developing victim mentality? No, not doing that either. I've processed it. And because I've processed it, I can now see that the bad that the reprobates or relief seekers in general did to me is now working in my favor. Does it mean now that I have to thank them for doing the bad to me? No, the bad should have never happened, but the bad is working out in my advantage. So, you also have things to process. Just realize that the bad that happened works in your advantage. Think about Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery to Egypt. And he ended up in jail in Egypt for something he didn't do. But he was now in Egypt. So, when the moment came that he got out of jail, he went right to the palace. So, him being in the jail was a very bad thing. But the bad worked out in his favor. It worked out in his advantage. And he became the Viceroy of Egypt. And being the Viceroy of Egypt, he secured the welfare and well-being of his relatives who were the Israelites, who later became the nation of Israel. So he fulfilled God's purpose despite the bad that was done to him. Yes, God will tolerate bad things to happen to you. Very bad things. It can be a spouse leaving you, either through cheating you or by lying about you. It can be people withholding benefits from you. It can be pe people firing you from your job without any reason. It can be people just turning on you. And it can be all kinds of stupid reprobate things that people will do to you yes to you much of it will much of it will be personal god will tolerate a lot of bad stupid stuff to be done to you because he knows you will walk by faith and because you walk by faith all those bad and stupid stuff people did to you will work in your great advantage and that's how god will be glorified by you overcoming the bullshit that was done against you. And by you overcoming it, you nullify it. You trample upon the violence. Instead of being broken or the, and destroyed by the violence, you trample upon the violence. Look. The bad that happened works out in your advantage. Some of you feel like a loner. You have contact with people, but it's as if most of those people you're in contact with always forget about you. Or anytime you meet new people, they tend to forget about you. You feel like what's going on. Indeed, many of those people are forgetting about you, but look at the bigger picture. Are they following Christ? Are they looking for deliverance? Are they even interested in long-term solutions? Are they even interested in solutions to begin with? Uh, no? Then it's a good thing they forget about you. Because if they're not into long-term solutions if they're not, if they're not into deliverance if they are not into in, in, if they're not into life joy and abundance then why are they with you so why are they with you if they're not into life and abundance if they're not even interested in complying with justice which means complying with safety why are they with you so they're keeping danger in existence so if they're keeping danger in existence, why are they with you? Because they want you in the danger that they are keeping in existence. That's what it's about. But because they now forget about you, you're now freed from their control issues. So, realize how fortunate you are. Some of you are thinking, Lord, why don't I have more money? If I had thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars or euros, I could do a lot of good things for the kingdom of God. I could do, you know, a lot of things that you could do. And you may be right. But look at this. Because you didn't have the financial resources you wanted yet, you now saw 
who people really are. Maybe you wanted to start your own uh, fashion brand, for example, and you were talking about it, and people were saying they were supporting you, but but behind your back they were, um, how would I say, talking bad about you. At the time, you didn't have any money to start your own fashion brand. But over time, you realize that those same people that were faking supporting you, they're not doing anything with their lives. And now you realize, ah, so all the time I wanted to have my own fashion brand. But things just didn't work out. People didn't want to support me. It's good they didn't support me. Because those people don't want any solutions. They don't want to do anything in life. So why would I want the support of people who don't want to get anywhere? Look, I'm not saying that when something bad happens, you sh you, it's a good thing that happens. Don't, don't call what's bad good. No. It's bad. But don't meditate on how bad it is. Realize that the bad will work out in your advantage. There is no other way. Well, that's it for now. Keep agreeing with Christ and be at peace.